Coming up, a stunning revelation about the late Frank Gifford. His family confirming that the former NFL player showed signs of a brain disease. Word of this coming after another week of NFL controversy. The league under scrutiny for injury protocols after that hard hit Sunday between the Rams and the Ravens. The QB for the Rams had trouble getting up, but he stayed in the game nonetheless. He was later diagnosed with a concussion. We will talk more about this after a quick break. Sometimes the present looked bright, sometimes romantic. We now know that NFL Hall of Famer and sports broadcaster Frank Gifford, who died in August, had chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's a concussion-related brain disease. The family for Gifford released this statement, reading in part, quote, We decided to disclose our loved one's condition to honor Frank's legacy of promoting player safety, dating back to his involvement in the formation of the NFL Players Association in the 1950s. I'm joined now by former NFL defensive end Marvin Washington, who spent a decade in the league. Uh, Stephen Miles, a professor at the University of Minnesota Center for Bioethics, is also with me. Marvin, let me start with you. Just your your general reaction to the news about Frank Gifford having CTE. Well, um, it surprised me with the name, but it doesn't surprise me because, you know, the recent study that came out 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 of Boston that... 97% 97% of the players that were tested had CTE, and CTE is the NFL's industrial disease, so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, but I'm happy that his family decided to make it uh, a public so it will bring more awareness and, and, and bring this issue into the mainstream instead of just sports-oriented uh, uh, media platforms. Marvin, as you know, this is a disease that can only be diagnosed, not, not so much diagnosed, but it can only be determined that you have it um, upon your death by looking at, um, at, at someone's, someone's brain. When you die, Marvin Washington, do you think that the doctors will find that you also had CTE? Well, um, I was talking to an ex-teammate yesterday, and he says we probably all have it to some degree. Uh, but I'm doing okay right now, and, but I played football in the NFL for 11 years uh, in the trenches, so more than likely. But uh, this post-mortem diagnosis, I think within the next very near future, we're going to have living recipients that we're going to be able to diagnose it in with uh, Dr. Mollos looking at that and uh, Boston University also looking at that. So it's going to come very soon. Dr. Miles, let me bring you into the conversation here because you, you correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that there really is no way to prevent CTE other than not playing football. Well, uh, essentially, the league has not developed a way to prevent uh, CTE. And if we look at the events uh, in last week's Rams game, we see something where there were, you know, a dozen cameras, a dozen coaches, uh, and we simply had not only a failure of concussion management, but compassion management, and another injury was sustained. You have uh, joined a, another doctor there in Minnesota, and you've, you've, you've made a unique request. Tell our viewers about it. Suggestion. Right. I think it's time for us to pull football out of public schools. Uh, After all, public school football is only about a third of the uh, football in the United States. Uh, Schools create unique uh, peer pressures on kids which uh, divert them into play. And I think that if we moved football out of the schools into things like Pop Warner League, we could rebuild the sport as happened with boxing, uh, college boxing in uh, the 1960s, and then bring it back in when we have concussion management uh, and when we have uh, concussion prevention programs in place. But right now, there's no reason for us to make brain injury part of the, a part of the public school curriculum. Taking football outside of, of high schools, Marvin Washington, I think you and I both know that is not something that's going to go over very well in just about any community in this country. No, I'm down here in Texas, and, and as they say in Texas, there's two sports in Texas, football and spring football. <laughs> I do think uh, they, there needs to be uh, more concussion protocol and there should be a certain age that these kids put on helmets uh, because their brains are still development. You're going to make the game safer through science. Um, It's not going to come through equipment because a helmet is not going to stop a concussion. 
Uh, I'm well. There's a company called Candle Life Science, which I'm the spokesman for, and we're one of the companies that is doing uh, research on the therapeutic side of CTE and, and, find, and trying to find treatment and the cure for um, so many players, ex players yeah. that need it. Marvin, uh, do you have a son? Do you have sons? Yes, I do. Uh, my youngest son plays basketball. My oldest son, Evan, he played at LSU, and now he's up in the uh, CFL with the Ottawa uh, Red Black Redbacks. But he's on a CBD treatment program that um, I wish to get all players on because, as I said, there's no equipment that's going to stop concussions. Yeah. To make this game safer, it's going to come through science. Former NFL star Marvin Washington, Professor Stephen Miles, I wish we had more time. This is a conversation we are going to continue to have here. I hope you come back and join me. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Up next on Thank this. You.